Update 6.12 p.m. Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced that she clinched a deal with Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin on a large-scale coronavirus response package meant to provide paid leave for workers, expand food aid and support widespread testing for the illness at no cost to patients. The development sent a wave of relief across Capitol Hill, which had been nervously awaiting the results of two days of backroom negotiations. The House is expected to pass the legislation quickly, with the Senate likely to follow suit as early as Monday. Original article. Speaker Nancy Pelosi on Friday vowed to press ahead with an emergency package to address the coronavirus epidemic, the product of days of intense negotiation with Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin, even as President Donald Trump blasted the bill, accusing Democrats of not doing what's right for the country. The House is expected to vote Friday afternoon on a multi-billion dollar package drafted by Democrats, which would guarantee access to food, affordable testing and paid time off for people whose lives are disrupted by the virus. But it's unclear how many Republicans, if any, will back the bill without Trump's support. Senate Democratic leader Schumer and I, last weekend, called for further action to put families first. Today, we are passing a bill that does just that, Pelosi said at a press conference on the speaker's balcony outside her office. She made no mention of her conversations with Mnuchin, and ignored a question about whether she has reached a deal with the White House. Pelosi and Mnuchin have held at least nine phone calls on Friday as they strove to reach an agreement. Our nation, our great nation, has faced crises before, Pelosi said in a speech notably devoid on the partisan aspects of the debate. Now working together we will once again prevail, and we will come out stronger than before. In his own remarks an hour later, Trump declared a national emergency, freeing up an additional $40 billion in funding. Democrats had been pressing Trump for this move for several days. But Trump poured cold water on the painstaking negotiations between Mnuchin and Pelosi. We just don't think they are giving enough. We don't think the Democrats are giving enough, Trump said, even as Capitol Hill Republicans had been framing the differences as largely technical. We are negotiating. We thought we had something. But all of the sudden they didn't agree to certain things that they agreed to. So we could have something. But we don't think they are giving enough. They are not doing what's right for the country. The fate of the multi-billion dollar package has been thrown into flux on Friday by last-minute nervousness by House Republicans, who want Trump to openly embrace the bill to provide them political cover. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, R. Califf, went to the White House to meet directly with Trump earlier in the day on the coronavirus package and came back with a negative response. McCarthy later told Republicans that Mnuchin did not support the House bill in its current form, according to GOP lawmakers and aides. Every time they exchange papers, it's, well, that's not what we agreed to. It's that kind of disconnect, Representative Tom Cole, R. Okla, said of the ongoing negotiations. Without an agreement, it's unclear whether the House would need to return to Washington next week for Democrats to hammer out legislation with the White House and GOP leaders. A senior House Republican lawmaker, speaking on the condition of anonymity, said Trump's demand for a payroll tax cut as part of this legislative package, which could cost hundreds of billions of dollars, has been the sticking point for the president. Congressional leaders in both parties have been lukewarm to Trump's proposal at best, while also noting it would be something both chambers will take up in the next coronavirus initiative. If we reach agreement, we'll vote on it. If not, we will vote today on our bill, which incorporates nearly all of what the administration and Republicans have requested, House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer wrote in a letter to members on Friday. Short of a breakthrough in negotiations, Democrats are likely to pass the bill along partisan lines, which would signal that it will not get through the Senate and, thereby, is unlikely to become law. A number of top House Republicans huddled in House Minority Whip Steve Scalise's office on Friday morning even as copies of the legislative language began to circulate. Democrats have grown frustrated by what they see as stalling by the White House, with House Republicans increasingly blasting their opponent's bill as partisan. You know something, this whole business of a partisan bill when you have a national emergency is outrageous, House Appropriations Chairwoman Nita Lowy, DNY, told reporters on Friday afternoon.
Those who are starting to use those political terms, I would say, get over it. It's time for us just to work together and do the best we can, Lowy added. Pelosi assembled her leadership team early Friday morning after a long night of negotiations with Mnuchin on the aid package, which would guarantee access to food, affordable testing and paid time off for people whose lives are disrupted by the virus. Intense talks on the package have spilled into Friday, with both parties determined to reach a deal before the weekend amid the intensifying national crisis, which has ground to a halt everything from corporate offices to sports leagues. Pelosi spoke by phone with Mnuchin, the lead negotiator for the White House, earlier Friday morning, as the two sides scrambled to resolve lingering issues, specifically a provision on how much, and for how long, affected workers would receive paid time off. The conversations appear to be positive as Pelosi and her leadership team huddled on Friday morning, and one Democrat, House Ways and Means Chairman Richard Neal, even said that text would be released, in the next minutes, if not hours. But by Friday afternoon, lawmakers had little information about when they would vote, and what their schedule would look like next week, and at the moment it appeared doubtful Republicans and Trump would back the current package. Pelosi told reporters Thursday night that she would ensure a measure reaches the House floor on Friday, one way or another. Both Democrats and Republicans say they must see the final language before signing off. But no deal can be official until Trump declares he is on board, further complicating the talks. Democratic and White House officials, however, have remained steadfast that they will strike a sweeping accord that will deliver vast economic relief to suffering individuals and families while expanding access to key health measures that they hope will help contain the spread of the virus. The sense of uncertainty on Capitol Hill has been compounded by the growing numbers of lawmakers and aides who are intentionally isolating themselves after potential exposure to the virus. A staffer for Senator Maria Cantwell, D. Wash, has tested positive for coronavirus, and Senator Ted Cruz, R. Texas, announced Friday morning that he would be extending his self-quarantine until March 17, out of an abundance of caution. Senator Ron Johnson, R. Wiss, told Politico he is consulting with doctors on what he should do after news came out that a Spanish right-wing politician, Santiago Abascal, he met with on March 2 tested positive for the coronavirus. He said he's sure he shook Abscal's hand but added he feels fine. He's currently staying home and has cancelled all events in his home state. A spokesman for Rep. Chris Smith, RNJ, who also met with Abascal, did not immediately respond to a request for comment on what Smith is doing. More than 1,400 people in the U.S. have been infected, though many health experts fear that number is dramatically undercounted given the lack of availability of testing. Daniel Lipman and Melanie Zanona contributed to this story.